there's like a little flirty, there's a little closeness, you know, and you sort of feel the vibe if you're comfortable enough to ask the person, you know, so like, do you wanna come back to our hotel room? In this video, I'm going to go over some steps on how to approach a woman, how to approach the situation. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and to this little mini series about how to use Seeking as a couple. All right, this is the app slash site that I have been using over the last couple of years with Gab to meet um, a third partner for Gab and I, and we have had a lot of success on this site. Uh, even though I haven't used it in a while because we have been traveling quite a bit and it's hard, you know, when we don't stay in the same location for a long period of time to meet someone and build a connection with them. However, I get a lot of questions always about how to use a site as a couple because it doesn't really cater specifically to couples. So uh, in my last video, you can check it out. I go step by step on how to create a profile as a couple. And in this video, I'm going to go over some steps on how to approach approach a woman, how to approach the situation. This is based on my own experience and what I have done and what has been successful for me. And you can try it out, but if you have your own style, go for that because you definitely, you know, if you have your own vibe and your own thing going on, you know, lean into that if it's working for you anyways, but if it's not working for you, then, you know, maybe consider doing what, uh, what I have tried. All right, so you have your seeking profile all set up now. So now we are gonna get into how to browse and construct a message for them. Step one, when you're browsing the seeking site, even though they are trying to get away from the whole sugar daddy reputation thing and try to make it a real dating site for real people, there are still many, 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 many women on there who are looking just to make cash, just to get spoiled and things like that. So when I browse profiles, I definitely avoid profiles that have this insane wish list attached to it, that have some, you know, tagline about a PPM, which is a pay per me. Uh, you know, someone who talks a lot about money and gifts and all that kind of stuff. That is definitely not my vibe. I definitely avoid those profiles and, you know, I wish them all the best of luck. So I mostly go for profiles of people that, you know, are writing honest things about, you know, what they're looking for, what they're into, um, that just kind of sounds sort of nice and, and down to earth. So step two, I write a long introduction message and I usually start out with maybe something quirky or funny or make a comment based on something that they wrote in their profile because I want them to know that I took the time to read their profile. A lot of people actually write that in their profile. Like don't send me a message if you didn't read my profile because you know, you wanna come off as someone that's actually invested and cares and is interested in getting to know the person. And then I introduce myself with full names. I say something like, hi, you know, my name is Ali and my boyfriend is Gab and I'm the one that runs the account. I wanna make it clear that that's me because you know, in my experience as a single person and also in a couple, women seem to be more responsive if the woman is the one running the account. And then a sort of follow up with some, you know, a little joke and an open ended question. And then, you know, I ask them if they're interested in spending time with a couple. I make it very clear, I'm super direct about it. Um, just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page here. Step three, red flag. If a girl goes straight into something like, sure, I'm super down, uh, I'd love to spend time with a couple and starts getting into money talk, like how much, uh, you know, how much would you pay for the first date, things like that. I just sort of say I'm not interested or I just kind of ghost them because we're not interested in a pay per meet. We're actually looking for someone kind of cool to hang out with. We tend to stay away from the women on there who are looking just to, you know, make some money. When respect to them, but that's not gonna be us, unfortunately. So after that uh, introduction, a lot of women are very responsive to it. And, you know, some say that, oh, you know, they have been with a couple before and they really liked it. And yeah, they're sort of interested. And then there are surprisingly a lot that say, you know what, I've never actually done this before. This is piquing my curiosity. Tell me more about it. It might be something that I'm interested in. And FYI, uh, ba again, based on my experience and the feedback that I've gotten from the woman, uh, they were much more open with their conversation with me online because they all felt 
like they, they, they knew they were talking to a girl. They just knew it. So they felt more comfortable and, you know, chill and relaxed to sort of be a bit more open and fluid about this conversation, which I totally agree with because I would also be as responsive as a single person because it's just kind of different when you're chatting with a guy and when you're chatting with a girl. I mean, if you're a girl and you're watching this, I know you kind of agree with me here. <laughs> Guys, you might not get it, but there's a certain kind of, you know, back and forth, a vibe, a tone, and an ease that uh, you just feel when you know you're talking to a girl. All right, step five. I always ask how their experience on seeking was. I want to know where they are coming from, uh, if they had good experiences, if they have bad experiences, because A, I want to make them feel comfortable and heard. Also, I'm just kind of curious, you know, I'm always curious about how people's experiences on apps are. And I think it's a good icebreaker to sort of talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and maybe make some jokes about it, maybe find some things relatable about it. So that question always gets a lot of really good responses because they also follow up with how our experience has been. And then I can, you know, follow up with, well, you know, our experience has actually been really good. We've met a lot of people on here. Uh, you know, some have turned sexual, some have not, but then have turned into friendships and so on. So I think it's a really great icebreaker to sort of, you know, continue the conversation and get a little bit uh, deeper insight into where this person is coming from. Step six is I try to get off the app as soon as possible. So if I feel like there's a nice vibe going on, I ask them right away, do you have WhatsApp? Because it's so much easier to chat on WhatsApp or you know another messaging app than it is on the site because I don't really use the app and I don't always log into the site. So it's very easy for me to miss messages and I definitely don't want to miss messages because I don't want people to think that we are not interested. So. I always suggest let's go on WhatsApp. And at the beginning when Gab and I were doing this, when I would ask to transfer to WhatsApp, I would uh, recommend to create a group chat to include Gab in it for a few reasons. One is that so we are all included in the conversation and we are all aware of what's going on and no one feels excluded because for example, if Gab I don't know, we're the one having a WhatsApp conversation with a girl. I would feel pretty excluded if I wasn't involved in that conversation. I wouldn't like it very much. So I wanted to make sure that everyone was on the same playing field. And the other reason is to make the other girl feel more comfortable that, you know, we're all included in this because I have been in situations in the past where I would be talking to a guy online and he would be telling me that his girlfriend, you know, is into this idea and she is on board, but would never uh, get the three of us together. So that's a red flag for me. That kind of shows that the guy is just kind of in it for his own thrill. So I wanna make sure everybody is on the same page and feeling super, super safe. Honestly, at the end of the day though, Gab didn't really care to be in the chat or not. I've sort of stopped including him in the chat. Um, he doesn't really like a lot of notifications on his phone and he doesn't really participate that much. He's not really a texter kind of guy. So if there's something that I wanna show him, I can show him on my phone. He can read the messages, I don't care, but he's much more of an in-person talker. So he'd much rather just like skip the texting, tell me where I need to be for the date and like he'll be there. All right, step seven. Once you've gotten a good feel for the person, like I said in my last video, do not delay the meet. Set something up right away, okay? Because the momentum, you don't wanna lose that momentum, all right? It's there and you wanna keep riding it, okay? This person is interested, it's great, let's keep the vibe high. So you wanna get in and ask them right away for a date when they wanna meet, how they wanna meet. Do they wanna meet in public? Do they wanna meet in private? You know, you wanna make them feel as comfortable as possible. Usually I always say, do you want to meet up for a drink? Because that's what we always do on dates. Let's meet up for a drink at a bar, get some snacks, whatever. So yeah. And you know, the last few dates that we had, um, Gab and I were trying to cut the alcohol and, you know, stop eating out so much in restaurants, especially when we're traveling. So I started asking our date if they were comfortable meeting us at the house and I would cook dinner and so on. And I would assume that they would have said no, like I'm not going to meet a couple that I've never met before in their private home. That's freaky. But I was actually surprised at, uh, you know, the, the yeses that I got. So yeah, they were interested and they felt comfortable and it was cool. I made dinner and, we chilled and you know, that was, that was it. 
All right, and step eight, if you have gotten this far, you are on the date, or maybe you're not on the date yet, but you've arranged a time and a date you know, to meet and so on, is make sure that you say there is no pressure, okay? So you wanna make it clear that you know, you're going to have a good time, you're going to chill, you're going to have, you know, fun conversation, uh, share some life experiences and stories and stuff like that. And, you know, if there's a vibe, great. If there's not a vibe, that's okay too. Um, you wanna make sure they feel comfortable. And again, that there's zero pressure there to engage in whatever, okay? You always kinda of wanna check in at the end and, and see what kind of vibe is going on. I mean, you can sort of get a pretty good idea if things are going in the right direction. You know, there's like, I don't know, like on any date, there's like a little flirty, there's a little closeness, you know, and you sort of feel the vibe if you're comfortable enough to ask the person, you know, so like, do you wanna come back to our hotel room? Option, if they wanna go home or if they wanna see us another time and so on. And it is always very much appreciated, okay? You never wanna pressure anyone to do anything. So some of the times that has resulted in us going into a hotel room right away, sometimes that has resulted in us ending the evening and seeing each other another time. And sometimes that has resulted in the evening ending and then just like a complete ghosting of the situation. Not from our end, but it's happened like two, three times <laughs> I've been ghosted. A little shot to my ego, but that's okay. So once again, you know, a lot of these girls that you meet or people that you meet are really just looking for some good connection with good people, a genuine good time, a good laugh, a good story, learn something new. And you know, they're kind of curious. And you know, they know nothing will come out of it. I mean, they're on a website that's specifically to meet a man, you know? So when they come meet a couple, they know nothing will come out of it. They know it's just kind of gonna be a good time. You know, they're kind of curious, a little experiment. If something comes out of it, great. If not, that's okay too. But at the end of the night, if you had a good time and you know, you learn something new, then that is so meaningful for a lot of people that I think that most of us undervalue when it comes to dating, whether you're in a couple or whether you're single. So that's pretty much it, friends. Um, if this seems like too much work for you, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but you gotta put in the work. You gotta, you gotta put in the work if you want to find some good quality people to, you know, have some fun experiences with and to learn something with. And that's it. I'm just sharing with you, based on all my experience so far, what has worked for me um, in the past. So if you have any questions, comments, whatever, if you don't want to comment publicly, like I always say, you can always shoot me an email and uh, ask me there and I will do my best to, uh, you know, give some advice based on my own, whoops, give some advice based on my own experience. You could definitely check out the links below this video if you are curious about trying it out. And uh, if you do, let me know. Je vous aime.